I thought it would be helpful uh, in talking about innovation to kind of deconstruct it a little bit and distinguish it between a few different kinds of innovation, which have very different characteristics. Um, so the, the first kind of, of innovation, which is probably the one that's most closely tied to research, is innovation of the building blocks. So this is creating new things out of which we can build systems, like lasers and microprocessors, and, and actually the, the components that go into building those. And so right now, a vast majority of our innovation infrastructure is actually on innovating those building blocks. And so it's literally millions of people in a very complicated network that involves universities, small companies, big government labs, um, and typically, these are people that are looking at a very narrow part of the problem, but have deep, deep knowledge in it. Um, uh, but very little knowledge, actually, of other, other fields, or because it's so hard to have deep knowledge in one area that it doesn't leave you time to have deep knowledge in, in multiple fields at once. So, so for instance, I, I interviewed a uh, graduating Caltech student, um, uh, a couple of years ago that um, was super highly recommended top of his class and I, I asked him, so what, so what are you interested in, in studying? And he said, um, I'm interested in gallium uh, phosphide, which is a very obscure material used for making blue light emitting diodes. And you know, that was what his career was going to be. And I, I sort of pushed him, I said, well, you know, surely, you know, aren't you interested in more than that? I mean, you're a bright guy. And he said, well, yeah, he says, I could, I could imagine getting interested in galley marsnide also. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, I really pushed him and say, like, you know, but, you know, that's, that's kind of limiting. I mean, don't, I mean, think big here. You know, what, what else could you do? I mean, what, else, what, if, what if you couldn't study galley phosphide? And he, he sort of looked up and sort of got this dreamy look on his face. And he says, you know, I could study the entire gallium series. And so, so, you know, this is, but I, I'm sure that this guy will, in fact, you know, make real developments in this particular material, and that will become a building block for other people building systems on, and so on. So yeah, can you give me his name? <laughs> <laughs> so an awful lot of innovation is, is about that. And, and that is, I'd say, our, uh, you know, the strength of the American system of innovation runs, I think, pretty deep still in that, in that area. Um, the next kind of innovation, I think, is the one that probably gets the most attention from people because it's where it impacts them. So somebody comes along and takes a bunch of these building blocks that have been built and recognizes some human need and puts the building blocks together in a way that addresses the need. So a, a good recent example of that is you know, Apple um, making the iPod. So they took you know, little tiny disks and music compression methods and microprocessors and little LED displays and essentially a bunch of building blocks that were out there and required huge amounts of investment, put them together into a system that you know, the big insight there was not, and you know, the big problem there was not understanding how the building blocks work, but it was understanding how people behaved, you know, what, what problem they had with their music, and how these building blocks could be used to solve that. So that kind of systems innovation tends to be the one that we celebrate the most because it's where it matters to us. And so there's a lot of that happening. Although I have to say that, that what that mostly requires is um, knowledge about people rather than knowledge about the components, because the people that make the components are very happy to come to you and say, look, I've got a disk that does this. I've got, you don't have to understand how it works. So I think that's another level of, of innovation that's happening. And then there's a third kind of innovation that happens, which is that when, as new technology and, and new possibilities come along, society innovates, and people innovate in how they act because of the technology. So we change technology, but then technology changes us. So we organize our, we reorganize our organizations last century for the telephone, build skyscrapers with offices in them. You know, that wouldn't have been possible without that communication system. Or, or today, if you, if you look at any kid, how they think, how they think with Google is very different than how I thought when I was that age. I mean, I used to think it was really important to know things. Knowing things is very 20th century. 
So, <laughs> you need to just be able to find things. It's a very, a, a very different thing. So that, that kind of innovation, I think, is in some sense the most profound kind of innovation. And that, I would say, is actually happening much more globally um, than it is within the US. That's the, the driving uh, places for that sort of um, adaptation to technology and technology changing people. We're very conservative about that. Um, and, and this, is, this, is not the, this is not ground zero for that kind of innovation. So in talking about it, I think it's worth, worth separating those out. Um, and it should stop there. Great. Thank you, Dan.